It's the world's oldest colony in the heart of the Caribbean. It's been bankrupt for years and devastated by hurricanes. So why are rich investors storming in? I think the two biggest priorities I have in life is to, one, live the most awesome life that I possibly can, and two, is to help as many people live the most awesome life that they can. Entrepreneurs say they can turn this ruined island into a high-tech hub. Are they exploiting disaster, or can they save the Enchanted Isle? Que se puede vacilar, es que el principio tropical. Que se puede vacilar, es que el principio tropical. It was the worst storm anyone had seen. Hurricane Maria wrecked a third of Puerto Rico's homes and the entire power grid. As a US territory, their hopes of rescue rested on Donald Trump. We are praying for the people of Puerto Rico. We love Puerto Rico. Luis Rodriguez and Christine Nieves waited for help in vain. I just remember this feeling of Armageddon. Everything's dark, there's no government, you're on your own. It felt like everything has collapsed. We've come to their town Mariana eight months after the hurricane and it still has no electricity. It's been the longest and largest blackout in US history, and it's not over yet. <laughs> President Trump hailed the rescue effort as a triumph. Studies suggest more than 4,000 people died because help came too late. <laughs> The story that we've been passed from generations to generation is America is going to protect us, is going to provide, it's going to, when it matters, they can defend us, they can, and then when it mattered, they couldn't get people here. I think it was a great moment of just a story collapsing, and that's very important and very powerful, because that's a story that we've been holding on for generations. The power grid was antiquated and unreliable even before Maria took it down. Mainland contractors are struggling to put it back up and it's already hurricane season again. Now part of the problem is that FEMA, the Federal Disaster Agency, is forbidden by law to improve the grid. When they make repairs they can only restore it to the way it used to be. And that means they've had to source outmoded equipment, some of which isn't even made anymore, ship it down from the mainland and spend more time and money to make the system bad again than it would cost to make it good. It really is that insane. Luis Rodriguez has given up waiting. A musician by trade, he's now an amateur electrician by necessity. He and his neighbours are putting up solar panels and installing batteries. Is the government encouraging people to do this or helping them? It's the country. They want to put a tax of 30% of every solar thing. You're kidding. Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Since Maria, their community's done almost all the rebuilding on its own. <laughs> Luis and Christine helped mobilise the town to clear roads, rescue old people and set up a community kitchen. <laughs> At its peak, it was feeding 350 people a day all thanks to donations and tireless volunteers. This looks great. I know, I know. 
Washington has actually stopped them buying cheap food from neighbouring Caribbean islands. For more than a century, all imports have had to come from US ports on US ships. So if we want to get an avocado from Dominican Republic, it has to go to Florida first. America has a 3.5 million captive market. We can't buy anything that is not from America. That's good for them. And that makes the prices more expensive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything is expensive. Puerto Ricans are literally second-class citizens compared to mainlanders. After the US seized the island from Spain in 1898, Congress made it a territory, not a state. That means people here can't even vote for their president. The island has been run by outsiders pretty much since Christopher Columbus came across it in 1493. For centuries, Puerto Rico was seen as the gateway to the New World. Since the hurricane, it's shown everything wrong with the New World. Today's politics and economics and bureaucracy have fundamentally failed this community. Which is why some say it's the perfect time to become the gateway to a different New World. This is where Puerto Rico's next chapter might be written. The west coast resort town of Rincon, surf capital of the Caribbean. It's a week-long gathering called Restart Week, aimed quite literally at restarting Puerto Rico. Many of the guests are unlikely looking millionaires. They trade in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, selling digital money for real money. Everyone says we're the smartest guys in the world. Why don't we come out somewhere where that we can live in this beautiful place and be guests of these great people and you know, hopefully make a difference. And what's the business attraction of coming to a place that's just been leveled by a hurricane? A uh, uh, blank slate. Right? It's, it's just a blank slate. They believe their technology can help replace Puerto Rico's broken infrastructure, from cellular networks to solar-powered grids. It's called blockchain, and the guest of honour is a self-professed blockchain billionaire. He's super famous, he's super wealthy, everyone wants his time. But what's really extraordinary about Brock is that one, he's literally dedicating the projects that he invests in to be projects that are furthering the average person, not just the super rich. His name is Brock Pierce. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little late. <laughs> Once a Disney child star, he helped build up a global video company that collapsed in scandal. He recovered from that to make a fortune in cryptocurrencies. Thank you, sir. Uh, I've been surfing a bit over in San Juan. Yeah? So I, 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 gotta, I gotta get, like, my surf game ain't there yet, but uh, I'm inspired. Now 37, he's made Puerto Rico his new home. Hey there, Brock. How are you? Eric, thank you very much for talking to us. Great to His meet vision you is to create a tropical Silicon Valley. Puerto Rico has the, the possibility now of being put on the map as a hub of innovation. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing if it, if it works. Brock Pierce says he can bring serious money from the mainland. One of the, the personal skills that I have and one of the things I can do to make a difference is I can bring the venture capital. I can bring the angel you know, investors, the mentors, the advisors, the co-working facilities, the companies. I mean, how many companies has anyone heard of that have raised venture capital in Puerto Rico? I'm yet to hear of one. Blockchain was first developed for cryptocurrency, but its applications go much further. 
For this blockchain gang, Puerto Rico is the perfect place to show what it can do. You know, has the internet changed our lives? You know, mobile phones changed our lives. Um, the blockchain is something that is that transformative, but you don't need to understand it in the same way, do you know how your phone works? Do you understand all the components and how they're made? You know, do you know how the, the internet all works? It's not just altruism or surf and sand attracting the tech crowd. The island is just a three-hour flight from New York. The local government is offering huge incentives to stay. In the birthplace of Piña Colada, they'd pay just 4% corporate tax and zero tax on capital gains and dividends. Most locals don't get what they're bringing. Guess blockchain. Blockchain. What is blockchain? What is blockchain is the question. What is what? Blockchain. Okay, okay. No idea what that is. Don't know what blockchain means. <laughs> what is it? I have no clue. Guess blockchain. Es tecnología digital de Ledger sobre la cual se utiliza el sistema Bitcoin. Correcto. Since the time of Columbus, assets have been tracked by bank ledgers. The benefit of blockchain is that it makes its own ledger, cutting out the bank and any fee charging middleman. You deal peer to peer, or as they say here, mano a mano. I've just used a credit card to deposit $200 into a Bitcoin app to buy a very small slice of a Bitcoin. Now I can either sit on that and wait for the price to go up before I cash out, or I can try to use this digital money to buy something real. Buenos dias. Buenos dias, good morning. You take Bitcoin, I understand. Yes, of course, I just said Bitcoin. Fantastic, let's go. All right. Jose Santana had to Google what Bitcoin was when a crypto trader first booked his taxi. Yeah, I had to Google it because I have no idea and I have one hour and 30 minutes to figure it out because I, I tell the client a white lie, you know, it's like I, I accept cryptocurrency, but I didn't. So I had to figure out how to do it because they say maybe this is going to be an opportunity for me right now. So it's, maybe it's a... He downloaded a digital wallet. Now, every time he's paid in cryptocurrency, the software makes an encrypted record called a block. Each new block updates a chain of blocks, creating a reliable and transparent ledger. OK, thank you very much. What do I owe you? So, sir, $29 in bitcoins. OK, this is my first time, so I press $29 and I press send. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah, easy. That system of secure, decentralised records creates huge potential for reconstruction. People could set up their own solar power grids and charge households for exactly what they use. They could eliminate corruption by tracking how every dollar is spent. <laughs> and with crypto, they could avoid transfer fees on money sent from aid groups or relatives on the mainland. But for all the hype, people right now have more urgent concerns, like fixing their roofs before the next hurricane. I pay that is nothing, and in the morning, look down my home. I, blow, I look down my eye, I don't see for the eye. But. This is already one of the poorest places in America. But while the rich are getting tax breaks, the poor are getting squeezed. Healthcare costs are rising, pensions are being cut, workers are losing their benefits. University fees are going to be more than doubled. And literally hundreds of schools are being closed. This is harsh economic medicine people here see as poison.
Students are leading the fight against savage austerity cuts. The University of Puerto Rico is losing $200 million. Student activist and folk singer Adriana Rodriguez says it has nothing to do with Maria. For decades, local governments funded their spending by issuing cheap bonds, in effect selling IOUs. The tab is now running at $72 billion, and the US Congress has ordered Puerto Rico to slash the debt. That's a debt that we didn't create. When I say that we didn't create, I'm talking about the people, the students, parents and teachers, and like it was politicians in power uh, with these corrupt um, practices that got us into that debt. And, and I would even say that um, banks uh, in the United States, knowing that we didn't have the capacity to pay, this, to pay them back, um, loaned us the money anyway in sort of this like plan to, to keep us in debt. For generations, many graduates have had to move to the mainland to find work. This crisis will make it even harder for them to stay. It's left young people desperate to find a new way. But they've grown deeply sceptical of outsiders. Recordemos que el desastre, mira que no es natural. Producto de ser colonia, nunca somos prioridad. Escribamos nuestra historia, busquemos la libertad. ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está que no nos llega? the main session of Restart Week, a listening day to hear what Puerto Ricans think. The blockchain gang knows local support will be crucial if they're going to turn this into a blockchain island. I have believed for quite some time now that, you know, cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology was going to change the world. In fact, I believe it already has. Like when you drop a rock in the, in the pond or whatever, the ripples start going out, but it takes seconds or minutes for those ripples to finally reach the outside of that pond, right? And so, you know, the blockchain has already rippled reality. It's already rippled reality, and reality is changing for us. The mood around the resort bar is upbeat, but there's trouble looming in paradise. With all that you're doing, there are still people who say you're all vulture capitalists coming down here to feed on the carrion of, of Puerto Rico's misery. I, they haven't met us. <laughs> Hang out for a moment and you, you should be able to tell instantly that that's not our intentions. Does it annoy you when that happens? Uh, no, I don't get annoyed by, you know, the uninformed. You know, you, you don't get mad at a child. We're here to support. We want to understand the challenges, what you have faced, and how we can help make the home affordable for you, for the land, and help bring our tools and guidance, but to support with. So we're here just to support and learn, and we're going to co-create this, what we want to design together. At first, it's mainlanders doing most of the talking. But independence activists have crashed the session to ask some pointed questions. We're ta you guys are making it seem like all the children in Puerto Rico need to be well-versed in technology. And that is not the case. What they need to be well-versed in is agriculture. And those two things are totally opposite. Don't, don't take the mic, don't take the mic. Suddenly, the day of listening becomes a day of fighting. All of these people have such good intentions, but you don't know that yet, and I'm not asking you to trust them. I believe they that have people such have good intentions. intentions. And they are going to make that. something beautiful happen, and you're going to be a part of it, whether you like it or not. So it's you're a it's, 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 it's going to we be. We don't like it. We don't like it. That's what we're saying. But, 
eventually you will. The whole, the whole understanding that you're, you're going to create something that you're going to like. It's not going to happen overnight. And you know what? It's going to happen when all of us work together because this land is our, it is our responsibility collectively. You guys didn't have any interest in Puerto Rico until the tax breaks came, and that's why you're here. Instead of being welcomed as allies, they find themselves being treated as crypto-colonialists. What can be done? I am here in service. I've committed my entire life to the last breath in service. We don't need a savior coming in a white skin with blue eyes. We don't need saviors. We're not here to take over or do anything. We want to step behind you and give you strength in your numbers. I relocated my life from Hawaii. So don't tell me you don't have an agenda. Because your agenda is to come live on our land. And you know what? It's not that we don't want you here. It's not that we don't want Americans here. We want you here on our terms, just like any other country. This is not how the day was meant to go. I'm here to help any farmer that wants to figure out how to farm. I don't want to own their land. I want to figure out how to give them the resources so they can grow on their land. It's teach a man to fish, teach, teach a person how to grow. You know, great, people want to grow some things here. I'm here to help you grow some things. You show me, bring me the farmers that want some land. I will figure out how to buy that land to give it to them and so that they can grow the things that are needed here. Show me, show me real opportunities and I'll show you real solutions. Outside, Brock Pierce puts on a brave face. We had a, uh, a very healthy conversation with, uh, uh, you know, a few local Puerto Ricans that don't yet understand what this movement or technology is about, um, but they are, you know, upset generally speaking about the state of things and you know being feeling like victims for 500 years and you know very very passionate and going how is this going to be different you know how is you know how how should we trust this you know and i think that that's healthy are you and, surprised and, and, by the lack of trust no not at all i mean for 500 years this place has you know been taken advantage of so i mean that I think that that's where Puerto Ricans should start. They should start skeptical. Back in Mariana, Christine is getting ready for the next disaster. Luisa's old school closed five years ago. Yeah, this is heartbreaking. It's just... They're turning it into a community centre. Behind everything, when we found it, it was all the books were brand new too. We think that this place has the potential for turning into an emergency clinic if it's necessary after any hurricane, um, a centre for actual community-driven hurricane preparedness and planning, which we're going to be working on once a generator gets here. As usual, they're getting no help from FEMA or the island government trying to be the government, not the government, but understand what it is to be, to self-govern. I mean, how do you do that? How do you manage resources and energy and understand what people need? And you're working on the assumption that there is going to be another giant storm like Maria again. We're, we're preparing for that. Like many of her generation, she left Puerto Rico after she graduated. I actually left to never come back. Why have you come back? Why? Because if it's not now, <laughs> there's nothing worth fighting for. It, it's now. We are at a crossroads. And we'll look back at this moment, and it's either going to be a beautiful place that we've always dreamed of, or not. <laughs> They power up the generator for another night off the grid. The much-hyped blockchain may one day help rebuild Puerto Rico, but that will depend on local people being willing to embrace it. The age of outsiders telling them what's best are over. En la calle todo es un bembe, bele, bele, bele. Mi barrio ya la gente 
Que la cosa está dura, nos la arreglamos para estar muy bien. 